What up, ladies and gents? How y'all doing today? Doing a little ripping of 1987 uh, tops. I had some downtime this morning, so I thought I'd grace you all with presents and hang out. I don't expect anybody to be on at 10 o'clock in the morning, but I thought, hey, for kicks and giggles, I'll pop on. If people want to chit-chat, if they're not too busy out doing their Christmas thing, then we can hang out and chat together. Uh, I was going through my garage. Hey, what up, Bob? We should Maybe we should have went live together. Maybe we should have went live together, my friend. But, uh, so anyways, uh, you're working? And Santa's, and Santa's, uh, uh, like in his little, uh, workshop, you working like that kind of work. So I got some 87 tops, man. I'm hoping this one doesn't have, uh. Uh, any uh, mice in this, so let's make sure there's no mice making any homes in this uh, box of uh, 87 tops. As you see there, we got Ricky Henderson and Jim. What, uh, Jim Rice, is it wild rice? Is it jasmine rice? Is it white rice? I'm not for sure, but Jim Rice. So, hey, what up, Joe? Are you rapping? I am too. What, 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 what? So what you what you what you want what you want Joe man you know I need to just break down and buy or whatever subscribe to YouTube because these these commercials are uber lame man uber lame I got a eighties seventies and eighties Christmas music playing to kind of be in the festive spirit. So I already opened up a couple. Are you? Oh, as I almost like tear them up. I already opened up some some uh, tops cards. Pulled a Barry Larkin rookie card already. So that's kind of cool. And I thought, you know what? I was in my garage hanging out. Hey, what up, Doug? Yeah, exactly. What Jim Mint tins are waiting for me to to find. But uh, I was in the garage. We got we got a new addition to the family. I, I believe. I'm going to break down. We have a cat. A, a cat, a kitty cat. Hey, what up, Eric? Yeah, that's right, buddy. It's, uh, it's You're going to get to Christmas before us, right? So, Merry Christmas, homie. But, uh, yeah, so I was in the garage because we have this kitty cat that I'm going to end up, we're going to end up probably keeping. And uh, I had to, like, go get it a, a flea treatment and shots. And so we have to leave it in the garage for a couple of days so the, the flea treatment works and the fleas don't get in the house. So I was going through the garage, and I, I, I came across uh, the 87 tops. And I'm like, you know what? I got nothing else going on. Uh, so let's, let's open it up. I got a little bit of stuff I got to do later on this afternoon, I'm sure. But... Uh, Luckily, the federal government uh, in, in America, for a lot of people, Christmas Eve is considered a holiday as well in a, lot of, in a lot of corners of the United States. So we're off today, too. So I was four-day weekend, like the four horsemen, the four horsemen right there, uh, we get the day off. So I'm pretty excited. What up, Mark? What up, Doug? Neko? That's right. Neko, 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 Neko. And the Japanese... If you don't like hot food or hot drinks, they say neko shita, which means cat tongue. Yeah. So that they go, they give you a hard time. So when I first started living in Japan, they always would be like, "Oh, Jason, neko shita, ne. Like, oh, you have a cat tongue because I w I couldn't handle temperature hot, not spicy hot, temperature hot. And uh, I just never have been able to do that for whatever reason. And now I'm, I'm accustomed to it, man. They used to give it to me all the time. So anyways, you aren't here to talk, hear me talk about my, my life in uh, Japan or just my life in general. You're here to see the 87 tops and look at that. And true to form, the old gum stuck on the back of the card. Mark from Kentucky. What is up, my brother? All right. So let's take a look here. Let's take a look. I'll just show you some of the names worth showing. We got a Jamie Moyer. 
right there. Oh, oh, I'm not, as I'm dropping crap on the ground, we got Eddie Murray, Eddie Mofo Murray. Mofo Murray, what up? Merry, Merry Christmas, everyone. It's like, <laughs> if you see here, we got, we got John Russell. If you can see his face, it's like, the cameraman at top is like, yo, 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 John, stop. We got to get it. We got to get a picture of you real quick. And he's like carrying his equipment. And he's just like this. Are we done? Can you take the picture? I got to get going. This stuff's heavy. This stuff's heavy. What are you doing having me stop? Like he literally giving him the look like, what are you doing, man? Like, I just want to, I want to get out of here. Oh, newly Hall of Famer, Ted Simmons, Ted, a.k.a. Gene Simmons. Party on night. I'm working every day. Ah! Steve passed me the Garvey for my mashed potatoes. There he's doing some stretching. Do some old stretching for you. Yeah, Andy Van Slyke. Right there. Uh, every, uh, what is this? This is uh, Barry Bonds' nemesis with the Pirates. He was so mad that Andy Van Slyke was getting more accolades than him. That's probably because he has such a charming person that Bonds. That Barry Bonds had a, such a charming, lovely personality. Like a, a personality only a porcupine would love because it's so prickly. It's so prickly. Let's see which is the gum card this time around. We got Dave Rigetti on the uh, gum cards. That one does not make the list. He weird. So let me talk a little bit about this. Hey, what up, Don? So let me talk a little bit about this. I'm gonna. I'm trying to get some a little bit more uh, TTM fuel as uh, the great Tony, aka Troy Rudder, would say. Um, shockingly, I think I've mentioned this before. I had a monster box. I was trying to sell a mostly like overflow and commons, essentially. Uh, uh, the, on Facebook Marketplace. Well, it sold a couple days ago. I had sent it at 50 bucks, and that's like wishful thank you. Sometimes, shockingly, it actually sells for 50 bucks, which I'm pretty good about going through the cards before I put them in there, of course, as you would expect. And there's no way I would assume that unless I, you know, people make mistakes, there's anywhere near $50 in there. But it is good for firewood or a fire pit, if you will. Uh, in a nice cold wintery time as we see ourselves in now. But every every week I drop it about five bucks and then people go, oh, it was at 50. It's kind of like what Kohl's does or, you know, all your local like uh, businesses, they start you out really high and then they tell you, oh, we're taking from $60 to $30. Like, That's a heck of a deal. So every week I drop it five bucks. And so I bought, somebody bought it uh, three days ago for $35. Well, I was going to that box to get my TTM fuel uh, because it's a bunch, like I said, older cards from the 80s and 90s I don't really collect. Sometimes there's older stuff in there, but not too much. And uh, and so it's sold. So now I'm like, oh, no, I don't really have any TTM fuel. So when I do another batch of autographs, I want to have something to send. So I was like, here's this 87 box sitting in my garage along with, my, along with the new addition to the family, the, the kitty cat. And I got to tell you, I asked my son. I mean, my son, he's so precious. He's 12 years old. And like he's still, and I'm just like so grateful he has such a such an innocent mind still. And I'm like, what do you want to name the cat? Of all the names in the world, what do you want to name the cat? The cat's like that orange, orange color. It's not completely orange. It has lots of white in it. And I go, what do you want to name the cat, Luke? And he goes, let's name him Garfield. So we went all the way, extremely shocking, to the name Garfield, I think. So I haven't really christened the cat Garfield, but after spending a couple hundred bucks to get it, like shots and the flea medication to be put on it and all this stuff, as I scratch my neck, um, I think that's what we're going to go with. So I was like, that's the name you want to go with, son, Garfield? And he was like, yeah. So I don't know if that was him or his friends convincing him to call the cat Garfield. But anyways, so uh, when I was back there getting that, that's when I found these cards. And I'm like, ooh, here's my TTM fuel I was looking for. 
let me go ahead and bring that in the house, open up some packs. Maybe I'll get lucky to hit a couple, you know, um, rookie cards also for that, for like, uh, I forgot who mentioned it, some Jim Mint 10 action. So, man, dude, you're still, so I'm just going to hit chit chat if y'all want to talk. If you want to ask questions, if you want to have a nice back and forth, let me know. If you want me to get out, if you want me to get controversial, let me know. You know, I'm all about the controversial stuff. Um, and then we can do that too. Ooh, this is a pretty song. Who is this? Oh, yeah. This is from Scrooge, Annie Lennox, and Al Green. I knew I thought I heard this song before. Man, I, man. A, crim a criminally underrated movie, Scrooged. Scrooge with Bill Murray, the dude from that sings. I don't know what's that one song. The guy that was like a, he was a singer. He played like the we got the the gum card is Jim Deshaies. He was an '80s like he sang like Red Red Wine or something. He played the taxi cab driver. I remember that guy. He had like a weird name. You got Carol Kane in there. It was it was a good was a good movie. Buster Poindexter, that's right. That's it, dude. You got it, Doug. Thank you. But I love Scrooge. Scrooge is such a good movie. Criminally underrated. Who else is in that movie? You got Bill Bill Murray, obviously Carol Kane. I feel like there's a couple other names in there. Buster Poindexter. I knew he had like a unique name, but he was kind of popular for a couple songs in the eighties. He had like a really unique voice, kind of like uh, Bobcat Goldway. Always had that really weird sounding voice. Watch out for the storm, the Storm Davis. Now, is that his real name, Storm Davis? Storm. I mean, Davis is probably his real name, but is Storm his real name? Oh, oh. Boom, everybody. Mother Trucker, Barry, Lamar Bonds, baby. Woo! There. When he goes into the Hall of Fame this year, I'm going to be a multi hunter there. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Woo! Put that in your. Syringe and shoot it, baby. <laughs> yes. Woo. Yeah. Oh, I thought this guy's last name was Ecstasy because I was in some ecstasy right in that moment. I was like, oh, yeah. Ecstasy, baby. It was euphoric. Euphoria. Christmas came early, baby. That's right. Skinny Barry. Oh, Skinny Barry. Nothing's going to beat that. I should be. I might as well just stop. I'm just going to put that on the heap of other rookie cards I have to get graded later. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Oh, man. That was awesome. Woo. As uh, Ric Flair would say, woo. Woo. So that's let's see. Bobcat was in the movie too. Oh, I didn't even remember that. That's awesome. Oh, uh, George Earl Storm. I understand you why he go by Storm because George or Earl are both kind of lame names. No offense to anybody with those names. Or am I do I do I care? Not really. I have the most like common name in the white world, Jason. So I don't want to hear it. So it's like everybody from like. Every mom and dad from like 1975 to like 83 named their son Jason. So I mean, like, you know, it is what it is. I'm I'm grateful for Jason because I could have been called like, you know, a boy named Sue. So I could have it could have definitely went the other direction. So I am grateful for Jason. But I was like, you know, when I was in school in the 80s and the 90s, when the teacher would say Jason, there was like four of us in the class would like, yes. And I'm like, you know, so sometimes I wish my name would have been not Jason in those situations. But nowadays with people naming their kids like the dumbest crap in the world, I'll take the common white bread vanilla name Jason any day of the week. 
So I'm more than happy to take one for the team in that as in that aspect of it. Let's see. Is his nickname derived from the from a character in the book his mother read while pregnant? Uh, another story traces his nickname to similarities with Palmer, the Oreo Cy Young Award winning pitcher. He was a cyclone or a storm. Well, wow, look at that. We're getting edumacated today, everybody. Who said coming to Zombie Collector's channel is not an edumacation? Uh oh, sounds like somebody being murdered or something. We got Bobby Witt, who got the distinction with the gum. Mr. Bobby Witt. Bobby. Oh, what up, Spidey? The man, the myth, the legend. Spidey. Oh! Oh, Spidey got here at the right time. Boom, another rookie card explosion box. Barry Larkin. Barry Larkin rookie card. Whoa now, whoa now. This box is on fire. Woo. Put that bad boy over there in the, in the hot stack. What in the world, man? I'm done with all this talking. Let's get into music. Who the? Oh my gosh, it's Twisted Sister. That's the reason why. Twisted Sister. My boy is a wicked smart. It's a wicked smart. If you want to hear a really authentic, straight up, like, I mean, like, not even put on Boston accent, we got to get Doug back on here because. Because Doug and me and uh, uh, TTM Troy, a.k.a. TTM Tony, we're going to do a TTM episode of us all going live talking about autograph collecting. But Doug's accent is the most Boston accent I've ever heard. It's not been put on by, like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like, Adam, not Adam, Adam who? Uh, what's the guy's name who plays Jason Bourne? Matt Damon or Ben Affleck? Uh, uh, was it Krasinski, whatever his name is? Like, those guys put on their like real thick Boston accents. Doug is Doug's in Boston, who might still be here, has like the most legit Boston accent. Him and uh, Izzy is man 70. Oh my gosh, dude! Like, when you hear them, my, my the first time my son heard Doug talk on the phone, my son goes, Where is he from? Like, what country is Doug from? <laughs> And I was like, he's from the country of Massachusetts. So, yeah. Hey, what a, oh, what's up, dude? Pack fresh, baby. Pack fresh, you know that's true. Yeah, the hot box from the litter box. <laughs> that's true. I got to get it out of there before it smells like cat litter. No okay, what up? Scotty's here. Or not Scott, I'm sorry. Gary's here. I saw Scott. What up, Gary? Oh, man, Krasinski up from Boston. And Jimmy Fallon, right? Another Boston. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even. So, a little, I know I might have shared this story before, but I'll share it real quick. I'll do a, I'll do a quick version. When I was living in Japan, I was at a McDonald's in Japan. And, there, were, you know, there's, like, not very many white faces or any faces for that matter. There's not a Japanese or Asian face in particular. And. I'm at this McDonald's like the first time I've ever been to Japan. So I was like, oh, I want to try Japanese McDonald's. Is it any different than American McDonald's? And there's this white guy. There's like three people behind me in line. And he's like eyeballing me. And I'm like, what in the world is this guy staring at me for? But anyways, I get my food. And I go upstairs because in, in this in particular location, uh, you go, you order downstairs, like on the street level. And then there's a, you go up the steps. And there's like a restaurant above the street level where you get your food. So I get my McDonald's. I take it upstairs. And this white guy follows me up there. And he sits like caddy corner from me. And he goes, hey, man, do you mind if I come over here and sit with you? And we talk. And I'm like, all right. And I'm like, I guess it's just one of those things where like when white people, when you see somebody who looks like you, you I don't want to hang out with them because you feel like I'm a foreigner. It's like, sure, man, come on over. So we're talking. And notice he had some sort of an accent. This is my very first time ever being out of the country. It was like in the 90s. And I'd never been out of the country. I'd hardly ever been out of the Midwest, quite frankly, at that point in time. And so I'm, in, I'm sitting at this uh, McDonald's with this other white guy. And we're talking. And then I go, oh, I noticed you have a bit of an accent. And this is me being such a noob and naive and green and 
uh, I don't, I don't know if the word ignorant, that might not be the right, right word, but just like completely just unaware of the world around me. And he goes, oh yeah, yeah. He goes, guess where I'm from? And I'm like, okay. So I'm like sitting there, I kind of hearing him talking. I'm like, oh, well, this accent's pretty, sounds like Boston. So I'm like, oh, so you're, are you from Boston? Cause I'm assuming like every white person has to be American. And again, that's just my being so naive, never leaving the state, hardly ever leaving the state of Indiana. So I just was like, well, you're from Boston. Your accent's very Bostonian or whatever. So I go, are you from Boston? And the guy goes, uh, no, I'm from Ireland. And I was like, oh, my gosh, dude. I feel like such a moron, more than normal. And you can tell the guy was kind of like, is this guy joking? Like, am I, am I mentally challenged? Like, did you really just ask me if I was from Boston? Like, my accent is nothing like a Boston accent. <laughs> but I just was like, well, you know, you have this weird, unique accent. You're a white guy. Boston, Bostonians have this really unique accent. They're like born and raised there. And the guy was like, no, I'm from Ireland. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I feel like, talk about egg on your face. It was pretty embarrassing. What's up, Cobra? Yeah, that's true. Half of Boston's probably Irish. That's, that is probably true. So there's that. But, man, I'll never forget that, dude. I was, like, so embarrassed. Like I said, more than normal. More than normal embarrassed, but uh, all right, another pack. Got the Barry Larkin, got the Barry Bonds. We got the Barry Barry connection. That was very good. <laughs> then we got the Earl Weaver with the gum. Earl Weaver got the gum, gum sticker, stuck, stucky thing. All right, let's see if we keep on trucking with any other. We got the Roger Clemens. Talk about Boston right there, Boston Red Sox, Roger Clemens, another one of the PED bros. Oh, my gosh, with these commercials, get off of it. There we go. We got, oh, and then we got Daryl Boston. Ah, ah, you see what I did there? Ah, look at that face, dude. Those glasses are having a whole other zip code. Nice. Hey, what up? Brock's boys is in there. His A. We got Cecil Fielder. Always wonder that you you never notice, like, depending on what part of the country you live in. And I'm not saying one side is right or the other because it's whatever his actual pronunciation of his name is. Some people say it's Cecil. Some people say it's Cecil. So I always wonder, like, is it Cecil Fielder? Is it Cecil Fielder? Or what is his preferred pronunciation of his name? Always think about that. Twisted sister. All right. We should have uh, Eric, Intercontinental Cards. He's a Mr. Uh, pronunciation guy. He's, a, he's big about pr pronouncing people's names the quote-unquote right way. If you ever go to his channel, he talks about that a lot. I'm trying to get these cards separated. What is this card here? Oh, we got probably the only white guy named Lamar right here. Lamar Hoyt with the stick or with the gum on the back. All right, let's take a keep. Let's keep on trucking. All right, let's see. We get we got Sweet Lou Whitaker. Oh, Sweet Lou, that's a good action shot. We got Dave Parker, the Cobra. I always thought it'd be cool if Dave Parker, before he came out to bat, would be like, whoosh, whoosh, like he has a Cobra, and he's just like doing it towards the uh, the pitcher. You know, kind of getting his head a little, little mental games, a little a little hokey pokey before he gets in there, a little hocus pocus. Oh, we got Tony Gwynn. Here we are with the stupid commercials again. Why do you, you, you know, have you all ever noticed that YouTube used to not hardly ever have any commercials on their videos, like one every like couple 20, 30 minutes or something if you stream with streaming. And now it's like literally every like two minutes there's a commercial. I'm like, 
what in the world? Like, what is up with this? There's more commercials on YouTube than there's on regular TV, like for crying out loud. Oh, I know, Eric, you are. So um, uh, you are without a doubt a language guy because I've watched a lot of your channel. I watch all your videos now. I've, I've caught up and I've, I'm watching all your stuff. And you definitely are a language guy. So I'll go ahead and tell you right now, I'm gonna, I, I am going to apologize in advance that I uh, slaughter many a person's name. That has something to do with the public school system here in America, but it also has something to do with my lack of intellect. Talking about names, Tanana, Frank Tanana, with the distinction of having the gum on here. All right, let's take a keep on trucking. Let's see if I uh, don't screw up any names as I show them off. Oh, what about this? How do you pronounce that right there, baby? Tim Piznarski? Piznowski? I don't know. P Y Z N A R S K I. Prisninski? I don't know. I got this. I got this one. Fernando Venezuela. Not to be confused with Venezuela. Fernando Valenzuela. Valenzuela. Wakarimashta. Wakata. Que paso? Hola, como estas? Konnichiwa, Ginkadeska. Yeah, oh, I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does help to be multi be able to be able to speak multi languages, multi lingual, multi lingual. La 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 la. la. Mariano Duncan. All right, I can say this guy say you don't get more white bread than Jack Clark. There you go. I closed out that that pack and came back. With a vengeance, with a Jack Clark. When I was living in Japan, before I got there uh, at the schools I was teaching at, the, and uh, this is to throw no shade at anybody in particular or any group of people. This is just the reality for these for this Japanese fan or Japanese school system. Um, there was a girl who was teaching, supposedly teaching English. At these Japanese schools, I end up taking her job because she went back. She was from India, and they had her teaching English to the Japanese, even though English in India, though they teach it in the schools, and that might be their quote-unquote language. Most of them, I don't believe, in India start out as English as their first language. They have dozens, if not more, languages in India than English they learn in the schools. But regardless of that... Their accents are very hard to follow, even in America, who are English-speaking natives, have a hard time sometimes understanding people from India speaking English without having an ear for it. So this girl was teaching English to the Japanese, and they had no idea what she was saying. So when I came, they were, like, thrilled that I was able to speak American English or English, like from uh, Europe, European English, like uh, from England, or Scotland, Ireland, whatever, Wales, you know, or people from New Zealand, Australia, Canada, these places, because they can actually understand the English. And I would get, I would, <laughs> and it's so funny because I feel like my English is subpar at best, but I used to get a told on a regular basis how much they appreciated my English at the school. So, they're like, oh, we understand what you're saying. Thank you for coming. Our kids know what's happening now. And I'm like, thank you? It took me like weeks to figure out that they didn't know the previous teacher what she was even saying. Which, when I was in Japan, I had a hard time following a lot of that as well. So for sure. Uh, yeah, he probably didn't remember yeah, 86. You're right. Doug. All right. Yeah, it probably was. It was, it was, I mean, like I said, I mean, if you were born in, I mean, obviously if you're from another country, but you're raised 
in Europe or in America, and English is your first language, there's not going to be any kind of additional barriers. But if English is not your first language or you learn it through the lens of the country with a thick accent, and then you go to another country who English is not their first language or they're learning from you, it is a barrier no matter if you want to admit it or not that is hard. It's like me asking somebody who's from France to teach me to speak German. But they're not from Germany. They're from France, but they learn how to speak German. And they're coming to tell me with their thick French accent how to speak German. It doesn't. It doesn't really make sense. And I, I don't. It, I wouldn't want that. I'd want somebody who's a native speaker of the language, with their accent, teaching me how to speak the language. It's like I don't want a Chinese person teaching me Japanese. If that makes sense, if you will. What's up, Pete Rose? Pete Rose, this is probably right when he was like, he's probably looking and saying, okay, so who am I going to take out of the game to make sure we lose so I can make some money off of the loss of the Reds? Oh, I went there. I went there. Yeah, from a cholo. What's up, Caesar? You don't want to do that. You don't want to learn English from somebody that is, you don't want to learn any language that's not their native language. It doesn't make sense. And you definitely don't want to teach children that because they, they're already at a disadvantage. I'll say it. We got Wade Boggs right there. Some Wade Boggs action. Man, oh, man, let's keep on track. I got another pack. I feel like after hitting the Barry Bonds and the Barry Larkin, who else is left? Uh, Rafael Palmero. I think that's probably the the last big uh, big rookie card that's out of these boxes, right? Rick Sutcliffe got the uh, gum this time around. Rick Sutcliffe. Let's take a look here. We got Gorman Thomas. Man, that guy's mustache is so legit, dude. That's one of the most legit mustaches in all of baseball. Where this guy here is, was it Gene Walter mustache? It looks like some pubescent teen. Look at that. Pubescent teen. Pretty, pretty sad. Pretty sad state of affairs. Oh, I forgot. I spoke too soon. I hope all you are sitting down. Merry Christmas because Bo knows Christmas, mofos. That's right. Bo Mofo Jackson right here because Bo knows Christmas. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here first, everybody. Bo knows Christmas. I know Jules is going there. Big Krishna, Bo Jackson, son there. Wow. Sugoi. All right. Yeah, baby. We got Bo Nose, baby. Bo Nose. Joe Carter. Joe Carter, not so exciting, but he followed Bo Jackson. Uh, let's see. Uh-oh. Here's one that Papino Man likes. Ken Shroom. Shroom. He got himself some a shroom over here, baby. Woo! Got those shrooms. And then we got we, we finish off that pack with a Reggie Jackson with the Anaheim, Los Angeles, California, whatever angels. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, baby. Put that, put that in your syringe and shoot it. Woo! Yes. K shroom. K shroom. Boom. Or I should say shroom. Yes. Yes. All right, man. All right. We're at like half the box, as you can see. Do I want to keep going? Do I want to take a break? What do we want to do here? I don't know. We're, we're de de evolving into. Shroom Talk. Some of these songs, 
a spaceman came traveling. Oh, this is this is interesting. This is very interesting. Uh, Christmas music choices on this channel, whatever it is. They're, I guess they're referencing Jesus as a spaceman came to Earth. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest with you. The jury is out. Let's, oh. Oh, um, there's gums falling everywhere. Son of a gun. Son of a gun. All right, let's keep on trucking. We'll, we'll do a few more packs at least. Oh yeah, is Crime Dog in this? Is he in here? Is Crime? I think he's in the traded. Is he in this? I know Greg Maddox is also in the traded. I don't know if they're actually in the regular tops. Maybe. Steve Carlton right there with the White Sox. And you even see, look at those rock and those stirrups back in the 80s, man. You remember that, guys? Do you remember the stirrups back in the day? I remember when I was a kid growing up, you could not wear your, your baseball socks without your stirrups. I remember get, getting into trouble for not for forgetting to put on my stirrups. The, the kids nowadays just don't know how good they have it with no stirrups on their socks. Carlton uh, had three. Eight, oh, he did have three 87 cards. There you go. Oh, here's another white sock for you, Gary. Carlton, don't frisk me. Oh, no, that's Fisk. I thought it was Frisk. Sorry. Carlton, don't frisk me. <laughs> oh, oh, almost got, almost got a little bit inappropriate. Don't frisk me. No one likes that. All right, that was a uneventful pack, other than the uh, Fisk. Fisk, man, I don't know what's. I'm thinking about lunch, guys. What do we want to do for lunch today? I don't know. I'm thinking about lunch. Oh, here we are with the gun. John Henry Johnson. Where he has the gum card. John Henry Johnson. Look at that dude's hair, man. That's like some legit, like, uh, Incredible Hulk hair. If y'all remember Lou Ferrigno, he had a very interesting, similar cloth of a hair. That is very interesting. All right, let's take a look at this pack. Scott Bradley, Darnell Coles. Oh! Bam! Another Barry Bonds, guys. Look at that action. Man, baby. Woo! Another Barry Bonds. Oh, my gosh. Double the berry, double the juice, baby. Double the berry, double the juice. Look at them. Look at them. Big, big boy. Big boy. Woo! Yeah! Oh my gosh, that is so sweet. You got two Barry Larga, two Barry Bonds, and a Bo Jackson on the back of the box. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, baby. Then we got Tony Gwynn right there. <laughs> I'm glad you like that, Scotty. Double the berry, double the juice. That's for all you kiddos out there. Then we got Daryl Strawberry. I had no idea that Yogi Berra was on the Astros. Hold on, wait, what? How did I miss that? What? Oh, well, what's up? What up, Jesse? What's cracking? When you talk about crack, I just got to pull a, uh, a Daryl Strawberry. If you talk about that kind of crack. Ah, you see what I did there? 
You see what I did there, everybody? <laughs> Woo! <coughs> All right, let's take a look here. Gary Carter got the gum on the back on this one. Gary Carter. Right there. Let's go into the pile of garbage. Oh, here we go. Ricky Henderson. I always like this card. It's always like such a great card. It's a great uh, action shot. I love it. Ricky Henderson. All right, Nick. Ron Chris. Franklin, oh, shout out to Eggie. Eggie right there for you. Franklin Stubbs. Old Stubbs. All right. All right, guys. All right. All right, let's not check everything out. Steve Carlton has a Giants card on back. Of them. Like, well, really interesting. That would have been cool. I did not. I did not know that. See, you learn something new every day. <clears throat> all right, guys. Anything else? You all want to, any topics? Anything we want to discuss today? And then, uh, did uh, everybody uh, get their shopping done for Christmas? Let's take a look here. Oh, uh, here we got John Mangini showing off his collection here on my group text. John Mangini, the legend that he is. <whistles> he uh, always has some cool stuff that he's either picked up or he's found in his uh, his in his uh, sanatorium or whatever that he lives in. That he probably never comes out of. He'll probably end up being like you know buried in there, like. Uh, Vladimir Lenin in, in Russia, like in a glass case, so everybody can go and see him in his collection, and he'll be like holding like his most precious cards. I'm assuming. Oh, uh, getting text right here, getting some text. Oh, this is all right. I want to make sure it's not any, uh, not that uh, the group text I'm in is not important. Make sure it's not an important text. So we got the shopping done. Anybody got last minute shopping to do? Today's the day, guys. Today is the day. You got you got to get it done today. You don't have any more time after today. A lot of places are closing early. So you got to make sure you're being proactive and get it out there and done. So there you go. See, Scotty knows you got to get it done. He's behind. That's the one thing I don't got to worry about nowadays, really, is I don't have a woman that I need to worry about anymore. I, I, I get gifts so my son can give it to his mom. And I'm happy to do that, not to pat myself on the back or anything. That's just the right thing to do. But I don't got the pressure, I should say, of coming up with some really nice, classy gifts for my uh, ex-wife. This is more like, hey, son, give these things to your mom because this is what she says she wants. And uh, hopefully she likes it, you know. So that, there we go. But really, I just have to worry about my kiddo squiddo. So that's what I got to worry about. And so it is what it is. So we got Jesse who's done. We got Scotty who still got to do some shopping. Um, I'm done. Luckily, I, I, I got done. I went to my car shop yesterday. And uh, he had supplies. I don't know. If you all go to your car shops, you might want to check in with your car shops or wherever you get your supplies. Because maybe some of the supplies are finally getting out. To the uh, to the stores because he had monster boxes. He had like the shoe boxes. He had like the fifty count and the five hundred count boxes. He had top loaders. He had penny sleeves. And I, I saw I went and bought me a couple a couple boxes of top loaders, a couple packages. I bought me a monster box. And I'm probably gonna go back next week and pick up some more stuff. But I was like, finally, I could get some supplies. He told me he'd got them, but I was afraid. Because I took a couple of days to get to his uh, his store, he was going to be out again because this stuff's been going like hotcakes. But apparently, he had a ton and he had stuff left, or people just aren't coming out and doing baseball card or card shopping because it's Christmas and they're focused on their families or whatever. 
and it still has been sitting there because there was quite a bit still there. So I was I was happy I didn't have to like get into a fist of cuffs in the streets of uh, Greenfield fighting over supplies. Secret Santa. Oh yeah, I think you're. I think you're. I think if I if I know Caesar, your gift was from the Adam and Eve channel, and it's about nine inches long, and it's probably uh, you probably have like a suction cup on the bottom of it, and I think that is your gift from whoever. Oh, Scotty, you got that stadium club Chrome blasters. Yeah, you're like, that's the reason why you got to go back out and go shopping, homie. Because instead of going for your wife, you said, Merry Christmas to Spidey. Ooh, and just knocked all that stuff into your cart, baby. Man, it must be nice to live in England, dude, where you all have everything you need. That's nice. I wish I could live in those worlds. Like, it's a... Uh, it's like a feast and famine, apparently, over here, at least in Indiana. I, I, I've heard from most of the United States is the same way. It's like you're just like fighting, fighting, ugh, fighting to get some supplies along with cards, of course. Feed up now, baby. Loads of supplies, man. Must be nice. Now, are you in England or were you in Wales? I think you mentioned earlier in the video or this live stream, Wales. But I had I had heard somebody tell me you lived in you're from. England, and I know England and Wales, I don't know, maybe it's technically the same country, or there's a distinction, I'm not for sure, but I want to make sure I get it right, that's the thing, because I want to be respectful and knowledgeable about who you are and what you're about and where you're from, instead of me just assuming, because you know what assuming makes you, the box says something about girth, <laughs> yeah, Doug knows, that's the gift that keeps on giving, Caesar, yeah, Jesse, I know you would. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Caesar. I give car for the nine nine cent store. That's all I said. That sounds like something I would do. <laughs> that's the gift that keeps on giving, my brother. So, oh uh, yeah, I would be. You might, you might just want to give your wife, Scotty, like money. Just say, hey, how much you were going to spend? Like, I don't trust myself, sweetheart. So if I go to the store and go shopping for you, I'm going to use that money for my cards. So here's, you know, a couple hundred bucks or whatever. You go and get what you want because it's safer that you do it yourself. For sure. Oh, uh, in a Daiso, yes. Yeah, I mean, like, easily. Yeah, those uh, Daiso stores, all the chakra shops in Japan. Man, that's why I used to do almost all my gift shopping for my friends and family back here in America. When I was living in Japan, I would just go and, you know, 30, 40 bucks, man, I'd buy me Tons of stuff. And then when I got home, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. How, I hope you didn't spend too much on it. And I'm like, no, I did not spend too much on it. I'm like, don't worry. It's fine. You're like, I did. I spent a lot of money, but you were worth it. So, yeah, like that song from SWV, Weak in the Knees. Weak in the Knees can't the way. So, yeah, you get weak in the knees, baby. You can't help yourself. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of how I thought it in my mind, to be honest with you, uh, that Wells was a separate uh, country, but with the empire or, 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 or whatever you want to call it. Because isn't Northern Ireland and Scotland kind of in the same boat, maybe? They're still they're separate countries, but they're part of the British Empire. And again, correct me if I'm wrong or if I'm, you know, like I said, I'm not correct. But I, 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 in, at least in my understanding, that's kind of like the image I have in my mind. But sounds like, obviously, now I know. So you're in Wales right now, but did move from move to England recently. Okay, nice. Different countries, United you know, Kingdom or Britain, uh, just means that stuff like England still. Oh, it's okay. Exactly. All right, cool. Thank you. See, I learn something new every day. It's important. You learn something new every day. Uh, because then you can grow as a person, right? Because if you stop learning, you stop growing. Now I'm growing wide, but I needed my intellect to grow wide, or maybe we need to have a girth as uh, 
I think it was it Doug or who said that? Jesse is about the girth. Yeah, Doug. <laughs> I didn't have a girth in my mind, not in my not in my stomach, and my face, and my chest, and my mind for sure, for sure. So to commemorate the. What we just got on talking about, I will play because it's very important. Well, not this commercial again. YouTube and these commercials, I just want to punch YouTube right in the nuts, man. It's like non stop punching. But I wanted to just play this little ditty from, from Jack and Diane right here. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby, weak in the news. Oh, yeah, who knew you were coming to my channel? Listen, some SWV, some 90s R&B for your listening pleasure. So, yes. All right, guys. Hey, it's almost an hour. It's it's uh, The pleasure's been all yours. I'm going to go ahead and hop off of here. I'm going to sleeve these rookie cards for my next PSA order that I'll send out. But I really appreciate everybody hanging out here. Merry Christmas to everybody. If you celebrate Christmas, if you don't, then good luck to you and your future endeavors. Until next time, peace.